Hi everyone, welcome to Snippets and Scraps. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, then welcome back. I'm so happy that you are here. Today I am working in my memory keeping insert. So first I'm showing you two weeks um, which I did not film. I did that off camera. So these are the two weeks as you can see. The second one is actually the week where the Olive TNs were released or launched. So I wanted to document that. Although I did not get the TNs until much later. But that was the week that they were um, launched. So yeah, for the first week that I'm working on today, I am going to use this pet tape and some washi to go with it i prefer grid or plain washi because uh, the elements from the pet tapes are usually very busy i also chose this um, label tape i think it's from peon i am trying to choose a label which kind of goes with the colors in the pet tape so yeah first thing that i do is of course immediately go towards the right bottom corner but as you will see i decide to move it to the left and uh, thankfully the label comes off very easily because uh, the insert is a tomoe river paper insert this is i believe i'm not sure if it's 52 or 68 gsm but it's from take a note planner uh, so i moved it to the left and then i choose this um, is it a telescope so i choose it to place on the bottom left corner above that label so as you'll see the pet tape and the theme of my uh, spread in general is going to be travel that's because i was traveling from the 19th of april until the 14th of may and i tried to keep a travel theme in each of these three weeks i was in bangalore for a couple of weeks and also in hong kong um, for i think 10 days so yeah i tried to choose a travel team um this pet tape from some sort of fern is not exactly travel theme it's more like an adventure theme um, but i still used it because it's, i don't have a lot of travel themed pet tapes or stickers but um, i really liked how this uh, spread turns out do let me know what you think of it once you've watched all of the travel themed um, spreads and let me know which one you liked the most so if you notice a difference in the voiceover quality that's because i am recording this part now after probably over a week and um, as you can see i have started uh, putting down some elements from the pet tape uh, which is from some sort of one the birds are actually pretty light there so i decided to put like a background color which is actually from a different pet tape i can't remember who this is from uh, probably loy design but if you're interested to let me know in the comments i will give you the details after that i move on to the bottom right uh, this is also from the first pet tape that i showed you which is the um, some sort of fern one i think the top left corner is my least favorite it did not turn out the way i had imagined but nevertheless i decided to roll with it and overall the spread is not too bad or, or at least that's what i think do let me know what you think um so yeah after that i think i move on to the memories this is the week my husband um, and i traveled with our son for the first time and he actually was not very well when we traveled i don't know if it was a good thing that we did he did not have any fever he was just a little fussy and he was coughing a little bit so we were concerned yes but we decided that since he doesn't have any fever probably it's not a virus or anything he is coughing maybe because of the temperature it was super hot and we were using air conditioning in our room so we thought that maybe he's gonna get better we were giving him cough drops but he cried a lot during landing and that is i think what triggered everything else that followed a doctor had advised us to give him a pacifier or to breastfeed him or to give him a bottle while landing so that the air pressure is released from his ears because he doesn't know how to do that on his own um, like we can swallow and release the pressure right so he doesn't know that so if he needs to release that pressure the only way is for him to swallow something so we tried everything we gave him pacifiers 
different varieties we uh, gave him a bottle i tried to breastfeed him but nothing helped and he just cried and cried i think because he was crying he was refusing everything he cried so much that he started coughing a little bit more after we landed and then he started throwing up and he was still not running any fever but we rushed to the emergency after we reached bangalore and the doctor said that it's the cough but it gave um some meds and some nebulizer and he was crying throughout while we were there at the hospital as well but eventually we came back and he slept it off the next day was much better except that he had stopped eating properly and that is what the doctor had warned us about he said that everything else is fine if he's not running fever and if he's eating well so he was still not running any fever but he was not eating properly so uh, on 21st we actually went to a doctor's again and yeah he again said that uh, it's the cough you have to give him nebulizer and uh, eventually he got better but we were supposed to travel to hong kong on 21st and obviously we couldn't do that so we rescheduled our flights for the 26th because the doctor said that he should get better by then and we were just uh, open anyway we thought that if we can't travel on 26th then we'll probably have to reschedule again so as you can see i've already moved on to the next week so let me just continue with the story so eventually on 20 um sixth we did travel to hong kong by then my son was completely fine except that he was still a little fussy he was not coughing he didn't have any fever he did not run fever throughout the whole uh, episode though so we decided to travel to hong kong and the moment we reached hong kong he was completely fine he was happy he i don't know what it was about hong kong maybe he knows that his mother and father loved that city he did not cry um, in the flight we had booked the bassinet seat and he slept most of the journey it's around six hours from bangalore to hong kong and he slept most of it and once we reached hong kong he was completely fine but we did not take him to the pool or things that we had planned you know uh, we decided to um, take it easy but i did go to log on the very first day um, actually the day after we reached and uh, i bought my olive tins and that was very exciting um, and my um, husband got a camera that he wanted to purchase for a very long time i am not sure what it is i think it's a dslr it's not point and shoot that's all that i know it's a nikon or nikon um so that's what we did the first day first full day in hong kong then we visited some friends and then we went to different um, places that we wanted to visit while we were there and i of course went shopping on 30th i went to the two main shops that i uh, purchased um, most of my stationery from while i was there i have already shown you the hauls the two shops are called petit zakaya and paperhood i have a couple of youtube shorts on my channel where i show you these two shops and like i said i have already uploaded my hong kong hauls um, so do check them out if you haven't already i will link the videos in the description box below so i think that's about it uh, from my first week in hong kong oh i did go to another stationery shop uh, it's called a slide and i picked a few things from there as well um, mostly delphonics pouch i finally purchased one of their polyester ones i think i showed you that um, pouch in my hong kong haul so i got that and i also got a few things for somebody in the journaling community who stays in india and she's become a good friend of mine so i purchased a few things from her including getting an olive customized um, it's not customized i should say engraved or embossed yeah embossed so i also got my um, olive passport size embossed with always always is um a dialogue or um yeah a dialogue from the harry potter books or films so as you know probably that i am a huge harry potter fan i'm a huge potterhead so yeah i got that word embossed in my um, passport tn and she wanted her name to be embossed in her standard tn logon by the way is the store that uh, sells the manual factory bears which are very popular in the journaling community the manual factory section of logon actually does customizations and embossing and engraving and customized gifting 
and uh, my um, travelers company fountain pen is engraved with my name and i got it done from there in fact my brown uh, travelers notebook in standard size also has um, the words swish and flick also from harry potter by the way embossed in it and i also got it done from manual factory i do love their services they are pretty fast they take like half an hour to do any engraving or embossing also because it depends on how many items you want to get um, embossed or engraved my personal manual factory bear is embossed um, the the apron bit is embossed with something very personal and um, yeah I, I see people traveling with that manual factory bear I feel like it's so bulky I don't do that um, but maybe i should you know have uh, the manual factory bear travel with me to different places as i travel and that would be something nice to look back on maybe i should do that i should at least consider doing that but i do feel it's very bulky i think the first edition ones were smaller but the ones that i have are not so in fact i did mention that the second manual factory bear that i own which is not embossed so i'm thinking of destashing it i will do that i have actually destashed quite a bit of my supplies recently and it feels so good so i am looking to destash a lot of my other stuff as well i have been a holder all my life but i have realized that um, I'm kind of living a nomad life right now, right? I am with my family at this point. I was in Hong Kong and I don't know how long I'll be in India and where I'll move from here. That is why I decided to destash quite a bit on uh, Instagram and I will continue to do so, including the manual factory bear. So do follow me on Instagram if you want to purchase anything. The last one was mostly for Indian um, followers, but if you are really interested, then maybe you can DM me uh, and let me know that you are really, really interested, then I can arrange to send it to anywhere in the world. Uh, of course, shipping will be extra, but do follow me on Instagram for that. And what else? Yeah, like you can see, I moved on to the next week now. This is the second week in Hong Kong. We leave for India again on the 6th, um, 6th late night. So for the second week in Hong Kong, we tried to take our son to different places like an island because he'd never been on a ferry so we took him to an island called Cheng Chao and it's one of my favorite islands in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is full of different islands and each island has a completely different vibe. Cheng Chao is mostly um, local people but it's very beautiful which is why uh, there are many lodges and not hotels i should say more like guest houses even camps uh, that you can stay over and it was pretty hot that day so we do not explore a lot but there's something in cheng chow that i have every single time i go there and it's mango mochi if you don't know mochi you should look it up it's a japanese dessert and it's yummy and mango mochi during summers in cheng chow it's the best so i had that of course also i filmed my hauls while i was in hong kong because my husband was going to work and i was with my son so while he was sleeping i thought that maybe i should just film some youtube videos and that's what i did I also went to Daiso and uh, there are no Daiso stores in India and I miss Daiso so I went there. I did not buy any stationery this time from them. What else? Um, on third we actually changed hotels. So we moved on to a different hotel in a different area called Kowloon and the locality is called Chimsha Choi or TST and that is actually the place from where you can see the skyline of Hong Kong which is ever so popular and then on i think fifth is when something tragic happened so my husband was at work and i thought that maybe i should go to an s light store there and um, buy a few more things that i wanted to the store itself is like two levels turns out that that store um, doesn't have a lift or an elevator between the two levels there is only an escalator so what i had to do is fold my stroller and then wear him i was also carrying a carrier so i wore my son and i explored the um, the upper level and then i came back down and then i was just trying to open the stroller back up because from there on i could start using the stroller again and i wasn't able to 
for some reason it was stuck and a couple came over and said that let me help you um, and what happened was they ended up breaking the stroller and it was the day before we were supposed to leave it was so frustrating i had to walk back to the hotel pushing the stroller because there was stuff right on the stroller i just couldn't leave the stroller there so i was trying to push the stroller while hoping that it would not collapse on itself and wearing my son who is not light by the way he's gaining weight um not the word and so i walked like i think three four kilometers actually back to the hotel and i was so exhausted by the end of it and uh, we had to buy another stroller on the day we were leaving it was so sad and i was so angry at myself that i couldn't open the stroller in the first place and which is why this happened and my husband poor thing had to go out buy a stroller after we checked out from a hotel at noon and our hotel um, and our flight was late night right so we were supposed to meet friends and all, all in all it was a very hectic day so much so that my son became very fussy and he was crying non-stop at the airport in the immigration and security check and, and i felt really helpless and the immigration person was thankfully not very fussy and i said i'm really sorry i just cannot um, bring him up show you maybe you can just stand up and look at him while he's in his stroller and thankfully they did that but he fell asleep later on and he did cry during the flight a little bit but later on he um, slept in his bassinet. I think the issue that happened during the flight was that during turbulence you cannot let the baby be in the bassinet and you have to pick him up and because he was sleeping when I picked him up he woke up and from there on he just was fussy and crying and i was so embarrassed but then i thought to myself why should i be embarrassed you know babies cry and it's okay um i know maybe people were giving me <laughs> the looks but i just decided to ignore them and um, after we landed everything was fine it was quite late at night when we reached india all in all i wouldn't mind traveling with my son again that's it for this long story time video i hope you enjoyed it it was different i did not take you through the individual memories i spoke more broadly and uh, do let me know what you think if i should do this more often so yeah i hope you liked this and if you did please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in my next one